Howdy, and welcome to Wise About Texas, your Texas history podcast. I'm your host, Ken Wise. Thank you very much for tuning in to part two of the Twin Sisters. This episode is being recorded and released in April 2020, which is not only the month of the 184th anniversary of the use of the Twin Sister cannons at the Battle of San Jacinto, but it's also right in the middle of the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. If you've been listening, I've been releasing several episodes about Texas Historical Commission sites uh, related to the Texas Revolution. San Jacinto is on that list, and in the next couple of weeks, uh, more toward the anniversary, we'll be closing out that series. So hopefully the stay-at-home orders that we're under here in Texas will be lifted shortly, and we can all go visit these great historic sites. Well, in part one of the Twin Sisters, we covered the manufacture of the Twin Sisters, in Cincinnati, Ohio, their arrival in Texas, and that fateful day when they were the key to the Texian victory over Santa Ana. Now, you'd think these cannons, the only artillery at the Battle of San Jacinto for the Texians, would be housed in a prominent place in a museum somewhere. But they aren't. In fact, we don't know where they are. That's right, we've lost them. Two of the most treasured artifacts in Texas history have disappeared. Where could they be? Well, in circumstances like these, as you might expect, theories abound. So let's take a look at a couple of the theories about where the Twin Sisters might be. We know that on July 22, 1836, Provisional President of the New Republic of Texas, David Burnett, wrote a letter to some of the citizens of Cincinnati probably the leaders of the Citizens Committee that organized the production of the cannons. And he thanked them for the gift on behalf of the people of Texas. He assured them that should there be a need, the two cannons would no doubt continue to provide a great service to the Texas Army. Now that implies that the cannons would remain with the Army, which is certainly an obvious start. But in 1912, a book was published in Houston, and this book was called True Stories of Old Houston and Houstonians. It was written by a physician named Dr. S.O. Young, Samuel Oliver Young. Dr. Young was born in Houston in 1848. And some years ago, my friends uh, Mark and Michelle at Copano Bay Press reprinted these books in a limited edition, which I was smart enough to order. If you're real nice to them, uh, maybe they'll print you another one. Young writes that, uh, here's what he said, quote, When I was a boy, there were two brass cannon, six-pounders, known as the Twin Sisters, that stood for many years on the northwest side of Market Square. They were beautiful guns, and each bore this inscription engraved just in front of the vent, presented to the Republic of Texas by the ladies of Cincinnati. Close quote. Well, that's interesting. So Young contends that the actual Twin Sisters were placed on Market Square in Houston when he was a boy. Now, when he was a boy, that would have been the 1850s, when he was old enough to be conscious of what that was, much less read it. But we think, or most of the sources say, that the Twin Sisters were actually iron, not brass. And brass, of course, uh, as far as I know, would be too soft to make make an artillery piece out of. Maybe you could. I don't know. Somebody that knows more about cannons than I I do, I'm sure, will email me. Young talks about seeing, uh, also in another part of the book, talks about seeing an iron cannon at the General Land Office in Austin, but that a plaque on that gun noted that they were given to Texas by General T.J. Chambers, who has made some appearances in some of the earlier episodes of Wise About Texas. Now, if you go to the Capitol building, you'll see a couple of small field howitzers that um, have those plaques on them, a gift from T.J. Chambers. So it would be hard to imagine that Young would mistake a six-pound field piece for a howitzer or compare them, really. Uh, But in any event, the guns that Chambers sent um, got to Texas after 
the Battle of San Jacinto. So those were definitely not the same guns. Now, Young, in his book, gets caught up in whether the Cincinnati guns or the Chambers guns are actually the twin sisters. But the Chambers guns, we know, could not have been the twin sisters. And we know the guns from Cincinnati were. So the real question is whether the guns he saw on Market Square were the actual twin sisters or not. Well, let's go to Francis Lubbock. Francis Lubbock was uh, elected, lived in Houston, was elected governor of Texas in 1861, the early part of the Civil War. And he wrote a fantastic memoir called Six Decades in Texas. I highly recommend that book. Um, He was present for a lot of early, significant early Houston history and Texas history. He was on the first boat, the boat Laura, the first boat to reach Houston at Buffalo Bayou. His account of that adventure is awesome. Um, He writes in his memoir that one of the twin sisters was fired at Sam Houston's second presidential inauguration in Austin in 1841. And there are some accounts that say that the guns were sent to Austin. Those accounts and the, the history of those accounts are probably all citing Lubbock's memoirs. Um, Lubbock also writes that the twin sisters were transferred to the United States government when Texas joined the Union and that they were allegedly sent to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He then goes on to describe a resolution of the Louisiana legislature after the start of the Civil War that gave the guns back to Texas. The guns then made their way to Austin, according to Lubbock, but were not in very good condition. Now, there's other accounts of this transaction, sending the guns to Louisiana or the fact that they had been sent to Louisiana uh, as federal property from Texas. And then once the Civil War began, that um, we asked for them back. One account I read said that um, the writer, and I can't remember off the top of my head who it was that I was was reading this. I don't have it in front of me, but... um, said that he got Sam Houston, the governor, to petition Louisiana to return to Kansas. Well, Sam Houston never was governor when we were a Confederate state. When we seceded, Sam Houston refused to take the oath and was removed from office. So that doesn't make that doesn't add up. But um, there are several accounts that these guns, and there's no question that some guns were sent to Texas from Louisiana. The question becomes, were those the very same twin sisters, if the sisters had ever gone to Louisiana. Uh Uh-oh, that's another mystery, because there's some, there's a story from Judge William Hamblin. Now, William P. Hamblin was a, Houstonian was a um, legislator. He was eventually a district judge here in Harris County. He claims the guns never went, and when I say the guns, I mean the actual San Jacinto twin sisters, never left Texas for Louisiana, that guns were sent to Texas and guns were sent back from Louisiana, but they were not the San Jacinto Twin Sisters. Well, let's go back to our old friend, Dr. S.O. Young, because later in his books, he claims that the Twin Sisters were brought out to fire a salute in Houston after Sam Houston was elected governor in 1860. So Sam Houston was elected but then, of course, refused after Texas seceded, as I mentioned, essentially refused to remain in office. Um, so Young says that the guns, and he uses the plural, were taken, were, were in Houston, and were taken to what he describes as a grassy hill on the corner of Fannin and Commerce Streets. Now, the corner of Fannin and Commerce Streets today is the end of a bridge across Buffalo Bayou. Um, Fannin, there's a bridge, a Fannin Street Bridge. Uh, Allen's Landing is just to the west and to the east, some industrial buildings. But back then it would have been a grassy hill. He says one of the twin sisters was fired, but that the other was spiked when they tried to fire it, um, which may or may not have been a prank of the time. But uh, he then goes on to say that both guns were spiked, which is confusing because he said that one of them was fired at first. In any event, he claims that this was the last time either of the twin sisters were fired 
and how appropriate that was because they were fired in salute of the hero of San Jacinto, Sam Houston. He also goes on to tell tales of how San Jacinto Day was celebrated in early Houston, and he includes a mention that the twin sisters were usually fired in ceremonial salute every April 21st. Um, So that seems to say, back up Hamlin's claim, that the twin sisters did in fact remain in Houston, which frankly would make a lot of sense given their age, their size, and their importance to Texas history. And I will mention as an aside, I hereby volunteer the front lawn of the courthouse where I work uh, for somebody to fire a cannon every April 21st. So get in touch with me if you can make that happen. All right. uh, Further to the earlier story that that the twin sisters were sent to Louisiana and were sent back. Um, Some versions of that story say that the guns participated in the Battle of Galveston, which occurred in 1863. And we do know that Rip Ford, later famous Texas Ranger, ordered the twin sisters to San Antonio toward the end of the Civil War. But we don't know whether those guns made it. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I left something out. From, Galveston, from the Battle of Galveston, allegedly they went back to Austin, and then Rip Ford orders them to San Antonio as he's on his way down to fight what would end up being the last battle of the Civil War. The question, of course, is whether the cannons that we're referring to were the San Jacinto Twin Sisters or simply another pair either called the Twin Sisters by a matter of slang or maybe a mistake. We'll never know. The most common story out there, however, and one you may have heard, is that after the Civil War, the actual twin sisters were in Houston, and that in July 1865, some Confederate soldiers took them into the woods near Old Harrisburg and buried them, although some accounts of that same story say that they threw them in the Buffalo Bayou. Some say they threw them in Bray's Bayou. It's all over the map. Um, there are other stories. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. There are other stories. One is that General Thomas Rusk sent the twin sisters to Goliad right after the Battle of San Jacinto to reinforce Presidio La Bahia, and that on the way, the guns were lost in quicksand. Yet another story is that the guns, the twin sisters, went on the doomed Santa Fe expedition that Lamar organized in 1841. I will say that the Republic of Texas probably would have used them or would not have hesitated to use the Twin Sisters if necessary. But uh, we do, there is an Ordnance Department report from the Republic of Texas time that uh, discusses the Twin Sisters in 1841. So neither the Rusk nor the Santa Fe story is very likely. Now there are some old newspapers from the late 19th century, the 1890s, that claimed that the twin sisters were used by the Confederates in the Red River campaign, but that was probably the way it's written is probably just speculation. But what it shows, I think what that particular article that I'm referring to shows is that the, the name twin sisters was thrown around a lot uh, for canon that people didn't take the time to identify um, if they could. And there are other stories uh, that I haven't gone into that are that are kind of wild, but the point of all this is we don't really know what happened to the twin sisters. Some of the earliest individuals to view the twin sisters, the steamboat captain of the Flash that helped uncrate them, and some of the people that hauled them to Gross's plantation described etchings on the actual tubes. And the etchings were the, the gift, this is a gift to Texas from the people of Cincinnati, Accounts of the exact wording differ. And then the, um, the stamp or the engraving of the name of the foundry on the end of the tube. Later descriptions talk about plaques that were inscribed and affixed to the canon. So right there you have a question. What, what actually, uh, were they etched or were there plaques? There were plaques on the guns sent from Louisiana to Texas, but all they said were, these are the twin sisters. Um... So you don't know, I mean, who knows? That doesn't really show you anything. Other questions include, were they brass or iron? They almost certainly were iron. They definitely weren't brass. They could have been bronze. Most likely they were iron. 
most of the time when you read about them, you read about iron guns. The account of the guns going to Louisiana and back again, I've sort of hammered that, but it, it's a critical point. Louisiana thought they had received the actual San Jacinto guns and at least thought the guns they sent back were the actual San Jacinto guns. But think about the amount of time that passed. Texas joined the Union in 1846. The guns were sent back at the beginning of the Civil War some 15 years later. How in the world do we know that those were the twin sisters? And I've not seen any documentation from Louisiana one way or the other that says whether those guns were the twin sisters, nor any writing about that. Um, what about the guns that were remaining in Houston? Well, the bottom line is there's just no way to verify. The sources on this are all inconsistent. They're separated by years. In 1860, uh, S.O. Young is specific that in 1860, the twins fired the salute to Houston and by then would have been 25 years old or almost, no doubt worse for the wear. Why would these ceremonial guns used only for that purpose for so many years be sent to Louisiana? I can buy in to the idea that they would have been buried after the war, however, to avoid them falling into federal hands. Reconstruction was very difficult in Texas, and the notion that some Confederate soldiers might spirit away these important civic items is a pretty good notion. The last man involved in that story to die was Henry North Graves, and his obituary in the Dallas newspaper describes him as being the last of the party that buried the twin sisters. And reportedly, he went back to try to pinpoint the location where they buried him in 1895, 1905, and 1920. Well, that was a long time, 30, 40, 55 years after he had buried him, and there, he couldn't do it. Well, that's not surprising the way Houston grew in those years, particularly the 1905 and 1920 excursions, he wouldn't have even recognize the area, probably. Um, many people over the years have dug up the southeast part of Houston looking for the twin sisters, and they've never found them. They haven't found any cannon that I'm aware of. And in the meantime, we've built roads, we've widened bayous, we've generally changed the entire landscape. I don't really know, honestly, if we'll ever find these cannons. But what we do know is that the good people of Cincinnati were very kind to provide the Texians with the only artillery that they had at San Jacinto, and Texas is grateful. Now, a little bit of commentary. What makes the most sense? I'm going to go with the burial story. I don't think the Louisiana guns were the actual twin sisters. I think they stayed in Texas, probably stayed in Houston, and are buried somewhere in the southeast area of town probably along Bray's Bayou, and probably at this point so deep that we'll never find them. But we can hope. And who knows? Maybe there's a letter from an old ancestor in somebody's attic in a box that tells more about the exact location, or at least narrows the area down, of the burial of the twin sisters. You never know. So let's keep looking. Well, now... It, at this point, I usually tell you how to go see some of the places I've described in the episode, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to recommend to you an individual's website who's done a lot of research on the Twin Sisters, and the website is www.earlytexashistory.com. That's the website belonging to David Pomeroy, native of Pasadena, Texas. And on that website is a speech he gave about 10 years ago on the different stories of the Twin Sisters. And it lays out the mystery very well. It raises all the good questions and talks about what he's discovered, uh, some of which I've repeated in this episode, some of which I went and looked up on my own, and some that I mentioned that weren't in there. But it might be a good head start for you to do your own investigation. And if you've got any information on what you think, where you think the Twin Sisters are, please shoot me an email at host at wiseabouttexas.com. Texas deserves to find these guns, and they deserve to be preserved. Well, that wraps it up for another episode of Wise About Texas. 
again, this is April 2020, so I hope everybody's hanging in there with the quarantine. Listen soon for more episodes on Texas Revolution sites and what you can see when you visit. Go like and share the Wise About Texas Facebook page. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wise About Texas. And if you're interested in supporting the preservation and promotion of Texas history and like what I'm doing here, go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Wise About Texas, and you can find out how you can sponsor the show. Thanks again for listening today. Go out and do something for Texas. And until next time, God bless Texas, and we'll see you down the road.